Today I'm going to talk to you about programming your Castle electronic speed control. And so there's many different varieties and it's used for a lot of Castle motors, uh, a bunch of Holmes Hobbies motors, and a bunch of different motors as well. And the real power of this ESC is how much programming can be done with it, you know, to configure it for your specific use. And there are several ways to do it. One is with, a, with an IBM PC or with a program card, a little card they sell, or the Castle Link. The Castle Link is the modern one uh, with an, an iPhone app. And Castle Link is what we're going to focus on. It is the best one for sure. Um, who doesn't have an iPhone? And the only problem is you have to buy the Castle B-Link module for about 45 bucks. Not cheap, but if you have a bunch of these uh, ESCs, it's, it's essential uh, because, because for Mac users, which I think are a lot of people now, it doesn't exist. You have to get a IBM PC. And I was forever keeping my, resuscitating my IBM PC and just to do this and I finally gave up. So here it goes. First thing you need to do is, this is your Castle B-Link. 45 bucks for this little thing. You need to uh, hook it in, connect it in between the ESC and the receiver. Turn it on. So you will see a light right there. I'll have a camera here too, so you'll be able to see both me and my app. And here's my iPhone. The first setting is cutoff voltage followed by auto lipo volts per cell. So for cutoff voltage, there's no cutoff, set voltage, or auto lipo. Kind of confusing. So no, cu no cutoff, you don't want to use that. If you're using nickel metal hydride batteries, that's what you use. But if you're using lipo, you have to have a cutoff to protect your batteries from discharging. And you can set the voltage yourself or use uh, an auto lipo voltage, which is predetermined here. So here we are in the set voltage. So if you want to set it yourself, you could do 6, 9, 12, and you could do your, your slider. So if you're very particular about what you want to set your voltage cutoff at, let's say you want uh, 3 cell, 9.2, then that's what you do. You really don't want to use this, this one because, you know, as you change batteries and whatnot, it's quite, quite confusing. So what you want to do is you want to set it at uh, auto lipo. And, and depending on what, how many lipos you have connected to your ESC, it's going to calculate by itself the minimum voltage using your voltage per cell setting here. So it's either 3 volts, 3.1, 3.2, all the way to 3.5. So default is 3.2. It's uh, a very good setting. The, the, if you want to get the most out of your battery, you get it to 3 volts. But then if you, you have no headroom, you know. If, once, you, once that thing cuts off, you have to turn it off right away, disconnect your battery. Otherwise, it's going to continue to drain, and you run the risk of getting under 3 volts because you just have no margin for error. So 3.2 is pretty good. You get the most out of your battery, but you have a little bit of margin before you get under 3. Okay, the next setting is crawler reverse. So without reverse, so if you are racing in a track, this is our GT5, if you are racing in a track, uh, you don't really want to reverse because when you reverse, people will hit you from behind. Not good. Uh, but if you are in uh, trailing around, uh, you want uh, either crawler reverse or with reverse. So with reverse means you, I shouldn't press this. Uh, oh, it's off. So with reverse means you're, you're going, when you reverse it, it breaks. So this is breaking. And then if you want to reverse, you actually have to tap it. So double tap. 
uh, but if you're doing crawling, rock crawling, you want it crawler reverse, which means you're gassing and as soon as you hit the brakes or hit reverse, you're reversing right away. And that's really important for, for crawling because when you are about to tip over backwards, you can just go back reverse and you'll be corrected right away so you don't flip over. Um, so and when you're not a beginner, uh, this is what you want. You have a little bit of control. You can do this to your vehicle. So it's very handy. So all crawlers pretty much want crawler reverse once you have a little bit of experience. Okay, the next one is BEC voltage. BEC is very interesting. Very fascinating. So 5.5 5 .5 is the default, 6 volt, 7.5, and 8. So this is amazing. Uh, because the default is 5.5. So this is your common servo right here, uh, Power Hobby HV. So this can take anywhere from uh, 4.8 volts to 8.4 volts. And depending on the voltage that you give it, the more speed and power it has. So the interesting part is the default is 5.5 volts. So you're getting some power out of this, maybe, I don't know, 300 ounces uh, of torque. But if you crank it up to 8 volts, then you'll get about 400 ounces, you know, about 25% premium uh, between 5.5 and 8. So you want to give your servo the most power that it can handle. It's like free money, so to speak. Why wouldn't you, right? Um, so understand what's, what your servos can take and you give them the most voltage. Often if you spend money on your servo, about 100 bucks, they can take 8 volts. 8 volts is very good and, this, and the amperage of this um, Mamba X is very powerful. So you'll get a lot more from your servo. So you want either 7.5 usually or 8, depending on your servo. If you have a, a Traxxas, um, which has um, uh, those cheap servos and those micro servos, you don't want to go over 6. They can only handle 6. Same thing with Axial. So this really refers to aftermarket servos that are very good. So that's your BEC voltage. And then you have some uh, beeping here. Disable idle beep, disable error beep, uh, disable data log, full warning, okay? So when you get your, your castle, it beeps a lot. And if you want to shut it up, you disable everything. Okay, the next thing is brake amount. So brake amount, you go from zero to 100, and that's when you, when you hit your brakes. How much of your, the braking power of your motor do you want? Um, so normally you want it 50%, uh, especially on a brushless motor, it has tremendous braking and you don't want, you just, you just want to have enough, but not too much. The problem with too much braking is you brake and the car, and the car flips over. Um, you know, you, you can't control it. So if you have a motor that doesn't uh, have a lot of brake, um, and can't control you down a hill, then you, you up this, but 50% is good to start with and it has the granularity, 51, 52%, whatever. Okay, so that's your brake amount. Drag brake, drag brake is cool. So drag brake is when you let go of your, your gas, does it brake? So on, a, uh, on, a, on, on fast cars, on trail cars, you don't want it to brake, it's just gonna flip over, uh, go out of control. You want to do it yourself. But on a crawler, things are so critical that as soon as you let go, you want it to break. You're usually on, t on a hill and, and, and sliding down, so you want it to break. The, the issue is how much do you want it to break? Normally, you want, to break, you want it to break 100% crawler full on, okay? And that's really what makes crawling fun and easy. Gives you an advantage over your competition, so to speak. Okay, uh, next one is a very interesting one, the drag brake ramp. Okay, so it's either disabled, instant drag brake, uh, default very fast, fast, medium, slow. Okay, so this one means uh, when you let it go, when it's about to drag brake, how fast do you want it that to come on? Um, the amount of braking we have is 50%. Do you want it instant or slow or super slow? You know, if you're going very high speed, um, you want it 
to be slow. You know, otherwise you flip over. Uh, but so you start out at medium, and you go from there. Moderately quickly is what they call it. Okay. And now we go to power. Okay, so start power, low, medium, high. You know, when you're starting out, how much of your power do you want to be available to you? And I have it set to medium, default is low. Uh, this one we usually want to do high. You know, if you have a good motor and you have a good ESC, uh, you want your power available to you when you want it, all your power. So this is your punch. But if you're finding it hard to control your vehicle at, at startup, it doesn't, it doesn't mean how slow it can go uh, from the beginning. You know, that, that's, uh, that's something else. This is if you gun it, how much of your power do you have? So you can go uh, low, medium, high. Max power is how much of your power do you want available to you? This one's an easy one, 100%, right? <laughs> The, it, it's not, it doesn't mean um, how, how you can control it. Uh, it just means what's available to you. So you want 100% of your power, but you want to be able to control it. Okay. Just giving you half of it doesn't mean you, you get to control it, right? You, you paid for all that power. Okay, the next one is reverse percentage. So when you go reverse, how much of the power do you want available to you? Um, 50% is the default. And right now I have to set to 100%. Oh, here's the consideration. So if you are, if your reverse is hard to control, you're ramming, and you're reversing and you're ramming into the rocks behind you, then you might, might, you might want to meter this. Um, the main consideration here is, is usually don't need all your power um, uh, when you're reversing, but where we want it is when your car is flipped, it's on its side, which happens in crawling often. If you have all your reverse power, you just put your wheels up in the air and reverse, and it will, it, will go, it will go right side back up. But usually, that will happen if you have a lot of power when you have 100% of your reverse power. So that's why you would want that, okay? Punch control. So this one, we have it disabled. Uh, there's some calibration involved. I think if you're having a hard time with your setup, and it's very hard to modulate. It has some punch control options. We haven't ha had a, a need for it. Uh, torque control. So this is more for, for very loose conditions. Once again, you know, if you have a two-wheel drive vehicle, loose conditions, it's a mess. You could you could enable your torque control to uh, lower, lower the torque limit of your motor. Make it easier to control. Okay, some advanced stuff. Arming time, 1.5 seconds. One point five. I don't know why you would want more time for it to arm. If you want to wait, <laughs> does it not make sense? Auxiliary wire mode. Auxiliary, I don't know what that means. Link, live, enable. Don't know what that. And throttle dead band. Throttle dead band is how much dead band do you want in your throttle if you think it's too too jumpy, too, too jerky. So we just set that to average. Motor direction, this is more for, uh, for brushless motors. Uh, on brush motors, you can just flip the wires on your, the polarity of your motor uh, to reverse the direction. 
Uh, here, you could, you could do it electronically. Motor type. Brush traversing, smart sense, brushless. Yeah. So you just put on the type that you want, brush or brushless, or that, that you have connected. Motor temperature, uh, sensorless, motor timing. Interesting for something like a, a revolver or a yellow jacket, you could adjust your timing normal. Mm. So if you want a little more sensitivity, um, a little more torque, you put it at the lowest, which is zero. Uh, highest gives you a little more pop. Motor temperature cutoff. It's disabled. I think you would need a temperature sensor for this. So one way to protect your motor. It's too hot. Cheat mode enabled. Okay. I'm not sure what this is. It's disabled. Setting description not available. Logging, a lot of logging. It's all enabled, but probably if you're racing. Okay, and finally, the true power of the castle is the throttle curves. So the throttle curve gives you exponential control of your motor, uh, and it's done through through this interface, and it's really cool. Before, I thought you could only do this with a full-fledged computer, so the Hobby Wing does not have this. So this allows you uh, more granularity with your motor, with controlling your motor. And the way you do this is you could set points in the curb, linear curve, um, So let's clear some points. Red line is our profile curve. So, so here what we're doing is, uh, what, what we're saying is um, normally uh, it's just, it's just a, a diagonal line. And if you do 50% of your throttle with your controller, it gives you 50% power on your motor. And, um, and it's good. But sometimes you want, especially for crawling, you want the more low speed control, the more granularity. You know, do, do you want 21%, 22%? You know, what, what's going to get you over that, that little tough little obstacle? And you do that with the, with the throttle curve right here. So a standard way to do it is when you're doing 50% in, it gives you 25% um, uh, juice on your motor. So it gives you a lot more granularity in that first 25%. It gives you 50% of your throttle throw. And it just ramps it up at the end, uh, which you don't really care as much about anyway. You, when you want to punch it, you want to punch it, right? Um, so that's the true power of, of the castle. You could, really, you could really control it this way. Okay. And you could do the same thing with your brake curve. You know, if you want, if you want ultimate control of your brake curve. Oh, why is my brake curve like that? Um, same thing. You could do usually usually go like this. So you have the first half of the the, the throttle throw. Uh, you have more. Uh, you have less movement of your car, so you have more resolution. And there you go. So when you want to. When you are all done, I think we're all done here. So disable settings. When we are all done, we send the settings to controller. And now it does it. Boom, the thing links and it's all programmed.
So there you go. That's how you program your your Castle BC using your Castle Billing controller. Thanks a ton.